Hello, dear friends. He who doesn't learn from history is condemned to repeat it. Opinion piece. Roman apocalypse. History repeats itself. Decline of the empire. Welcome the changes. This planet is very tiring. Solar storm this weekend. Let's start. The Alliance of Atlantis one thought it was all-powerful. It only took 10,000 years for its survivors to try again, only to repeat the same mistakes. We should also learn from the fall of the Roman Empire that dominated half of the world with its legions. The loss of values was fundamental to the cohesion and strength of the Empire. They contributed to the decline of moral and cultural decay, including corruption, hedonism, and lack of civic virtues. The Roman economic system was based on slavery and large-scale agriculture. As the empire expanded, slavery became less sustainable, and the economy became more dependent on heavy taxation and exploitation of the provinces. Corruption and mismanagement also contributed to economic decline. Slavery. According to David Barreras Martinez, the Roman Empire was based on a financial model of a slave-based productive base. Cheap labor that required, like this economy, to replenish itself from the conquest of new territories. This allowed the Romans to preserve their high state of well-being continue with their luxurious life and pay for a professional army that could undertake military campaigns abroad and fit back into the economic machinery of the empire. Once the empire's peak had been reached, its limits had been stretched excessively and it was already very difficult to govern it effectively, not to mention the complexity of maintaining both external and internal security. If their defense was very complicated, the imperial armies had to begin to worry more about protecting themselves from enemies than attacking them. Without wars of conquest, the Roman economy could no longer sustain itself in the way it had done in the previous two centuries. Epidemics and wars were also beginning to become widespread, while the first signs of change were becoming evident. Inflation did not stop growing and social inequalities increased every day. Don't all these indicators of the Roman apocalypse remind us of what is happening to us right now? History repeats itself once again. Reset news. Solar storm this weekend. Geomagnetic disturbances may occur on January 13th in response to the passage of one or more waves of solar plasma. It seems that some kind of international mass awakening has begun. Work people are taking action, according to Benjamin Fulford. A large-scale revolution is already taking place in Europe. Polish farmers have resumed blocking the border with Ukraine. In Germany, meanwhile, a massive protest by peasants has put Olaf Scholz's government on the ropes. It seems that China may also be facing a revolution. The collapse in real estate prices is causing mass unrest. As an old Chinese saying goes, if people are not afraid of dying, there is no use threatening them with death. Fear of revenge may be the reason why so many elites are seeking underground bunkers to hide in. Benjamin Fulford believes some kind of major public announcement of a jubilee and financial reset could happen later this month, but it's just his opinion. Judy Bington announces worldwide communication blackouts in a cyber war. We would go from maritime law to constitutional law. According to X22 report, the tide is turning. The whole world is about to change for the better because of the anti-establishment movement and they can't stop it. The only way to push your agenda, their agenda is to push events to scare people. According to Media Greer, the state 
The stage is set, the actors are in position, and the world is about to witness a seismic shift that will reshape the course of history. As the media crumbles, the quantum systems will govern as heralds of truth and transparency. As the dust settles, tremendous truths will be revealed. A coalition of 10 countries will activate the EBS with global coverage. Why Plush has hinted at the major world war theater production, which would actually serve as a catalyst for activating forces around the world. Humanitarian funds would be released and the people would be entrusted with the monumental task of rebuilding the world. The world of cryptocurrencies will undergo a radical transformation. The vast majority of cryptocurrencies, including Chinese currencies, will disappear into obscurity. In their place, ISO 20022 currencies backed by precious metals will emerge, bringing stability to the financial world. As we stand on the brink of unprecedented change, the world as we know it is on the brink of a transformation. Get ready, because the grand finale of this epic battle is just around the corner, and the world will never be the same again. It is the dress rehearsal of a great revelation. The days of cloak and dagger are over. The time has come to be informed with precision and perfection. The complexity of revealing the truth on a global scale means that protocols must be met and guidelines must be followed for the better. For the better. For the letter. We had that the schedule is finally firm. Only a select few know the exact and precise moment of events. For security and other obvious reasons, the calendar should be kept private. Breaking news. The US and the UK bomb Houthi positions in Yemen. The offensive has also had the support of Australia, Bahrain, Canada and the Netherlands. The US suspends the supply of military material to Ukraine due to lack of budget. The US is concerned about the rivalry between Zelensky and the commander of the Ukrainian armed forces. Economy. London estimates that Brexit cost the British economy 140 billion euros. The Turkish lira falls to its historical low and is trading at 30 per dollar per dollar, 30 liters per dollar. The Chinese electric vehicle industry is taking the lead and is scaring the West. The global South can impoverish the little West and create humanitarian crisis. You just need to deny the West access to resources and access to markets. Americas. Chile and Google will lay the first submarine fiber optic cable between Asia Oceania and South America. The increase in prices is punishing in Argentina while the highest annual inflation in three decades is expected. Argentina sets a record. Inflation reaches 25.5% in, in December and closes at 211.4% annually. Brazil meets its inflation target in 2023 after two years without achieving it. Reflections. According to Judith Castle, the key word for 2024 is expansion, as we now need to step into an expansive life at a much higher vibrational level of frequency bands. What holds us back most often are our own fears and unconscious blocks that rise to the surface because of what seems unknown and unexplored. Much of the darkness is now in the process of being released from this planet forever, on many levels. Welcome changes because they are necessary. Get ready to take those leaps of confidence into the unknown. According to Kesharash, higher dimensional souls, known as Stasids, have been present on Earth for thousands of years. They take breaks from time to time and return to their place of origin because this planet is very tiring. In the 60s and 70s, many decided to return 
bringing with them new friends and making the decision to help uplift the earth. Since those decades, and well into the 80s and 90s, millions of souls from higher dimensions have arrived to help humankind in the ascension process. It is these beings who hold within them the crystalline energies of divine light consciousness, which the earth and humanity need for graduation to the higher planes of existence. Many of them are activated right now and are planting seeds of consciousness in everyone they come into contact with and in the collective. According to Jennifer Hoffman, great energy has arrived with the portal of January 11th plus the first new moon of this year in Capricorn. Now is the time to get clear, connect internally and get excited for what is to come. Manifest and co-create this reality, apply the wisdom of last year's lessons and set intentions for this year's blessings. Align yourself with the powerful source energies that are intensifying in this special window of time. Pluto in Aquarius is going to use her in the light that will further unravel much of the darkness we have lived in for a long time. Pluto works like a glacier, moving slowly and steadily forward, sculpting the earth as it passes over it. The results of a glacier's movement are not immediately visible, but the landscape over which it moves is permanently altered. January's new moon on the 11th is the last hura for Pluto in Capricorn, as it makes the white but powerful aspect to Pluto. He's not going to leave Capricorn without reminding us of all the changes he brought, so that we do not forget that our landscape has been altered. There is no turning back, so we should accept that a new higher frequency paradigm has been installed and let to make the most of it. January's theme is revitalization and it is a welcome step in a blessed direction, as we could all use new perspectives, focus and direction now. To revitalize something is to bring it back to life, to refresh its purpose, to give it a new mission and focus. We can't revitalize ourselves without including the past or remembering why something didn't work out, was disappointing or didn't meet our expectations. We do not have the energy to maintain what we no longer resonate with. No, we do not do we need to. And letting go is part of the revitalization, especially when we are letting go of things we can no longer tolerate, handle, or want to deal with. So don't be afraid to let go of old energy paradigms because that is necessary to create new ones. And that's all for today. Thanks a lot, dear friends.